so we are discussing the design in software engineering so we are trying to derive a solution which is going to satisfy the software requirements this is what we call as design and uh, the objectives what we are going to see today our objective would be to introduce the process of software design and to describe the various stages in the design process and to show how object oriented and the functional design strategies they both are complementary to each other and to discuss some design quality attributes what is the programmer approach to software engineering how a programmer sees is skip requirement engineering and design phase and just start writing code what programmer want is i have a problem i will just go and start coding it in my uh, favorite language like c++ java dot let that c sharp etc but uh, why this uh, is the programmer's approach you know because he assumes that the design is the waste of time we need to show something to the customer real quick and uh, because the line of code that is written a, a day or a month we are judged by the amount of line of codes only and uh, we expect and we know that the schedule is very tight why because this is these are the grounds on which a uh, programmer understand that let me write the code and the design will be good and all things will be good so how to design a small and large scale system to design this what you require for designing this you require more effort but for designing this it will be immense effort so what is the problem is this a simple software system so this is a simple software system and i'm not able to find out what exactly is going on in here you know if i uh, give some time and try to understand each and every aspect then i may be the usual tool is the design abstraction as we just saw so we can abstract various layers and now this is in a in a figure or you know on a plain paper you will be able to understand so we have to do better than all these that means we need to have a architectural abstraction first right architectural abstractions so the architecture means you have certain abstraction you are component 1 is here component 2 is here component 3 is here so there has to be certain architecture which needs to be defined say you are going to make uh, your software on a mvc model view controller architecture or say you want a three tier architecture all these you need to define so what is not designed programming is not designed modeling is actually not designed modeling is a part of the architectural design and uh, design is again not a part of requirements when you actually finish your requirement then your design can begin requirement is what the system is supposed to do what functionality it is going to give and the design is how the system is built it is not about what the system is supposed to do but how the system is built so design or architecture there is a wide you know difference between a design and architecture as i said the architecture can be n tier architecture mvc architecture so that is not design it is a architecture so architecture is basically the uh, structure which shows the component and their interrelationship so high level model of a software system means a design is a high level model of a software system which describes the structure the functionality and the characteristics of the software system and the design can be understandable by your stakeholder and it also evolves or allows the evaluation of the system properties before even it can be built and it has all the well understood tools and techniques for constructing the thing from the blueprint what blueprint you have made now you have various you have uh, qualified understood the tools and techniques now you have a blueprint you can make this software so software system blueprint has it component their interaction and their interconnection so this is the software blueprint so uh, just uh, just i need to ask a question which aspect of software system are architecturally relevant these are the components and their interactions the the abstractions so how should they be represented more effectively just to enable your stakeholders to they understand reason ask questions query communicate about a system before it is built what tools and techniques they are useful for implementing certain architecture in a manner 
that preserves its property and we design the software but we must consider the hardware also and the environment also so design must reflect requirements we must be able to relate each requirement with the part of the design so design should be can be retracted or traceable to the requirements and how are we going to include the non functional requirement into the design because requirements mean functional and non functional requirement how are we going to include the non functional requirement into the design so there are various stages of design first is you understand the problem then you identify one or more solution then you describe the solution abstraction and you repeat process for each identified abstraction until the design is expressed in certain primitive terms so what we mean when we say problem understanding as is this we look or we Uh, see the problem from different angles to discover the design requirements then we identify if we, we have known the problem we identify one or more solution that means we try to evaluate possible solution and we will choose the most appropriate depending upon the experience of the designer and the resources which are available then we de describe the solution abstraction that is we use the graphical formal and descriptive notations to describe the components of the design you can use uh, uml or any other sort of things which can be used to model this and we are going to repeat this process for each identified abstraction until the design is expressed in the primitive terms so from informal to formal design this is an informal design outline you make it formal you make it more formal and then finally you finish the design so the design process that's in this design process the sh the system has to be described at certain different level of abstraction this is very important and design takes place in the overlapping stages it is artificial to separate uh, it into distinct phases but some separation is usually necessary these are the phases in the design you have requirement specification first you do the architectural design and after your architectural design is done you make a system architecture and now this is given all these three requirement specification architectural design and system architecture they will give you the abstract specification and in this you can make the software specification this goes to the interface design you make the interface specification then you design the component then you design the data structure and then the algorithm design so this design takes a long path this design includes the architectural design the abstract specification interface design component design data structure design in the algorithm design in the design phase as we just saw the architectural design identify the sub systems in design phase architecture will tell you the sub systems and the abstract specification the second one it will specify the sub system architectural design will identify and abstract specification will specify the sub system the interface will describe the sub system interfaces the component design will decompose the sub system into its components and the data structure design will tell you what data structure to hold the problem data in algorithm design is the design of algorithm for the problem functions so how we can start from requirement and reach to the architecture from problem definition to requirement specification we try to determine exactly what the customer and user expects from us then we specify what the software product is supposed to do and from requirement specification to the architecture as we just said how we need to answer certain thing It means how do we plan to build a design system we decompose the software into modules modules with the interfaces with the interfaces and we specify the high level behavior the interaction and the non functional properties and we also consider certain trade offs like its schedule versus budget the cost versus the robustness the fault tolerance versus the size and the security versus the speed so these are the trade offs we need to consider and we maintain a record of design decision with the traceability to the requirements also we specify how the software product is is to do its task means we are now reaching from design to programming so architectural design the early stage of the system design process we represent the link between the specification and the design process so where do we finish the requirements and we start design how are you going to answer this actually this is often carried out in parallel with some specification activities because it involves identifying the major system component and their communication the advantages of explicit architecture is of course we are moving from requirement to design and of we have stakeholders we can communicate with them so architecture may be used as a focus of discussion by the system stakeholders then we can do the analysis of the system that means this is analysis of of whether the system is going to meet its non functional requirement is it possible or not so we analyze the system with respect to the non functional requirement then the large scale reuse means the architecture may be 
reusable across the range of systems. Then from design to programming and the testing and maintenance, this is the advantage of explicit architecture. What about the architecture and system characteristics, how the system must be designed to achieve the performance, the security, the safety and the reliability and the availability and the maintainability, quality. So architectural design process starts, we have the system structuring. So the system is decomposed into several principal subsystems, system into different subsystems and the communication between these subsystems are identified. Then we control the modeling, that is the model of the control relationship between the different parts of the system is established. Then we decompose modularly, modularity we try to imbibe, that is the, we had the identified subsystems, they are again decomposed into more modules. What about the design quality? Design quality is a concept, it depends on the specific organization priorities. That means a good design may be so say most efficient, the cheapest and the most maintainable, the most reliable or the attribute discussed here are concerned with the maintainability of the design. So a good, good design, if you are, if you make things cheaper, maintainable, reliable, it is a good design. Quality characteristics are equally applicable to the function oriented and the object oriented design also. So we have certain design principles, we need to see the abstraction, the modularity, the coupling and cohesion, the information hiding, the limit, the complexity of course, we need to limit the co complexity and the hierarchical structure and the understandability, the adaptability. So these are all the principles we need to understand. Let's start with the abstraction. The procedural abstraction, which is the natural consequence of the stepwise refinement. The name of the procedure denotes the sequence of actions. For example, this is the abstraction level go from, say, we have main problem, we divide into sub problems. So levels are abstracted. So data abstraction, which is aimed at to finding a hierarchy in the data. We can have simple data structure, we can have application oriented data structure. So this is the data structure abstraction. What about the modularity? The structural, uh, structural criteria which tells us something about the individual modules. Modules and their interconnections. Cohesion coupling means cohesion the glue that keeps a module together that is the functional strength or inter in, in, interdependence of the component of the module. While the coupling is the strength of connection between two modules. We want the cohesion to be highest, coupling to be the least. So cohesion is the measure of how well a component fits together. A component should implement a single logical entity or function, not others. Cohesion is desirable design component attribute. So when a change has to be made, it should be, it is like localized in a single cohesive component. It should not propagate to others. Various level of cohesion have been identified. So we have a coincidental cohesion, logical co association, temporal cohesion, and procedural cohesion, communication cohesion, sequential cohesion, functional cohesion and object cohesion. So all these are types of different cohesion levels. So cohesion as a design attribute, this is, uh, you know, we need to often, this is cohesion which is not so easy to classify. So inheriting attributes from superclass, it weakens the cohesion. To understand a component, the superclass as well as the component class must, must be examined. And the object class browser, it assists with this process. What about the coupling? the measure of the strength of the interconnection between the system components. So loose coupling component changes are unlikely to affect each other. So they are in independent of each other that we want. The shared variables or control information exchange which will lead to a tight coupling. We don't want this shared variable or control information. And the loose coupling can be achieved by state decentralization as an object and component of communication via parameters and message passing. So the communication should be through parameters and message passing only, we will not use shared variables or control information. This is the tight coupling. If you see here, all these are tightly coupled because we have a shared data area. And in this, we have loose coupling. The module A has A's data, module B has B data, and they are communicating through message passing and parameters. So coupling with the inheritance, the object-oriented system are loosely coupled because there is no shared state and objects, they communicate only using the message passing, but the object class is coupled to its superclass. Your superclass is your base class, object class is coupled to the superclass. So changes made to the attributes or operation in a superclass, it will propagate to the subclasses, all the subclasses which has been derived. So such changes must be carefully controlled. What about the information hiding? Each module has a secret. And the design was a series of decisions for each such decision. We need to wonder how, who needs to know and who can be kept in the dark. We need information hiding. So it is strongly related to the abstraction. If you hide something, the user may abstract from that fact. Coupling and cohesion, secret decrease. The secret decreases coupling between a module and its environment. 
cohesion that means if you do the information hiding the secret is what the, will bind the parts of the module together that is the glueness or the functional interdependence of the module elements what about the complexity this is much talked about you know the measure it measures certain aspect of the software like line of code uh, if statement depth of nesting etc so this we use these numbers as the criteria criteria to assign and uh, assess a design or to guide design so higher value of complexity means more effort is required and the design is not good there are two kinds of com uh, complexity can be there intra modular and inter modular which is inside the module and these are between the modules we can have top down design and uh, bottom up design so in principle top down design involves starting at the uppermost component in the hierarchy and working down to the to the hierarchy level by level so in practice large system design is never truly top down some branches are designed well before the others so designers they reuse experience during the designing process which has to be designed well so this is the hierarchical design structure you have a system level design then you have a sub system level design these are may not be designed you know you need to make it so there is a criteria of stubs and drivers always when you do when you want to check and verify so understandability is related to various component that is the cohesion uh, can the component be understand or understood on its own the naming are the meaningful names being given do you have a documentation well documented is your design well documented that complexity whether you have complex algorithms or non complex algorithms so informally high complexity means many relationship between different parts of the design hence it is hard to understand so most design quality metrics are oriented towards the complexity measurement only and uh, we generally use them them in the software engineering what about the adaptability a design is adaptable if its components are use loosely coupled it is well documented and documentation is up to date and there is an obvious correspondence between the design levels and each component is self contained entity tightly cohesive so to adapt a design it must be possible to trace the links between the design component uh, so that the chain consequences can be analyzed this is the adaptability what about the design traceability all the you know whatever you are designing this needs to be traceable to see the object level interaction object decomposition level so these are these should be traceable what are the key points the design is a creative process design activities include the architectural design system specification the component design the data structure design the and the algorithm design so this is what we see in a short discussion that what exactly when we mean when we say design so you need to understand the designing means making your software or making uh, such structure or blueprint so that it is traceable to the requirement and it is uh, a blueprint so that a software can be made out of it or it can be coded and in this manner it achieves by itself high cohesion low coupling lot of uh, high modularity the maintainability the adaptability because if at all at the later stage some changes has come the design should welcome the change thank you so much this was designed for you